The oldest aspects of our religion emphasizes our sense of awe and amazement in the powers of nature and society, including the sun, sky, earth, wind, rainbow, thunderstorm, birth, puberty, marriage, death, fire, homes, hunting, the origins of ourselves and our tools and procedures, and the power that enables a bush to just grow out of the ground where before there was nothing. Some peoples attach human characteristics and personalities onto these deities. These deities are not worshipped, nor do people devote their life to them. They never ask, order, or demand anything of anyone. Instead, they are just representations of the powers of nature and of society. We encourage the presence of those deities believed to be helpful, such as the sun and health. Before collecting a particular type of food, we speak to that food deity, ask for its cooperation, and then pay respect for its life-giving gift. We hope that the harmful deities stay away because we want to keep disease and death away from us. None of these spirits are involved in moral behavior, which is the main concern of many of our modern religions. Even our monotheistic religions retain many aspects of the earlier religious forms, including the belief in spirits, angels, and demons. Morals do not form the main point of the gather hunters religion of deities because such small groups of persons keep the behavior of group members in close check. A deity is a name that represents a particular power. Consider a hunting bow. There is something that enables it to function. There is a power in the bow. When you hear a particular group of people say that Erler is the god of the bow, then you should think to yourself that Erler is the power of the bow and that Erler is the name for the thing that makes the bow function. The Ifwago people believe that there is a deity for every step of every activity. One anthropologist counted 1250 of Fuego deities. For example, while hunting, there is a deity for the level spot where one looks for the game, another deity for avoiding the snakes that lie along the path, and yet another for the moment of sicking the dogs. Some of us might think of a myth as a soap opera-like story that gives a funny explanation of nature or society in terms of gods having random attributes. Here is a sample. One ancient Mesopotamian deity was Demuzi, the god of grain, beer, springtime, fertility, and newborn lambs. Inanna, also known as Ishtar, is the goddess of the storage house. She meets Dumuzi one day and it's love at first sight, so they decide to get married right away. That night, Dumuzi has a bad dream about being attacked and killed. To be safe, he tells Inanna that he will hide in the small pastures in the desert and in the last remaining grassy spots of early summer. Demuzi hides, but a circling bird and a buzzing fly reveal his location to his attackers, and he is killed. Inanna decides that she will go to the underworld and attempt to become its ruler so that she can release Demuzi. The underworld is not hell. It is the place where the buried dead go. Inanna is allowed to pass through the gates of the underworld, but the gatekeeper tells her that she must be naked and crouched when she meets the underworld's ruler. Unfortunately, Inanna dies and so cannot overthrow that ruler. She is instead turned into a piece of green decayed meat and hung on a peg on the wall. Demuzi's sister, Geshtinanna, who is the goddess of wine, then goes to the underworld to search for her brother's fiance. Inanna is told she will be released from the underworld only if she agrees that Demuzi and his sister take turns replacing her throughout the seasons of the year. Dumuzi must stay in the underworld during the fall. Inanna must stay during the winter. Dumuzi's sister, guest Inanna, must stay during the spring. In fact, this is not a purely fictional soap opera, but a story that was taken literally by the Mesopotamians, just as was the power that enables a bush to just grow out of the ground where before there was nothing. As we human beings began to be full-time farmers and depend on a single source, 
our crops, for most of our food, our survival became more dependent on the whims of the weather and insects. We began to give human form and personalities to our deities. The three ancient deities of this mythical tale were the humanized representation of the powers in wine, the spring, and the storehouse. They were not worshipped. People did not give lifelong devotion to them. They were not creators. These deities never ask, order, or demand anything of anyone. They have nothing to do with the moral rules of behavior. They were not worshipped in the same way that modern Jews, Christians, and Muslims worship the single omnipotent God. Demuzi never demands anything of anyone. He is simply the power in the spring. He is there during the spring, and then he is not there. He is not everywhere. Demuzi represents fertility as it occurs in the blossoming spring. In the shepherding areas, he is the newborn sheep, while in the farming areas, he is the grain and the beer. The grain used to make beer dies when it is harvested. Demuzi, the blossoming spring, dies as summer develops. Mesopotamia's green winter grass turns brown by the end of spring. The last signs of spring will be the little sections of green grass that haven't yet died. Demuzi said that he would hide there from his attacker the coming summer. We can imagine an ancient Mesopotamian walk past the last small patch of green grass and say, Demuzi is hiding there. As the desert summer arrives, some animals begin to die. The location of their bodies is revealed by flies and circling birds as occurred in the story. The food in the storehouse enables people to eat throughout the winter. Inanna embodies the sense of awe people feel as they gaze at the life-preserving storehouse that is full of food. The storehouse begins to be filled when spring arrives. The storehouse dies, that is, becomes empty, near the end of winter. Inanna thinks she can trick the ruler of the underworld and take it over, but instead she is tricked. The ancient Mesopotamian people buried their dead naked and on their side in a crouched position. When she was told to meet the underworld ruler in this manner, it meant to the Mesopotamians that she was already dead. The storehouse dies in the late winter when it becomes empty, that is, when the wall pegs hold just one last piece of green decayed meat. As the newborn lambs are killed, this is Dumuzi dying, the storehouse becomes full again is alive again, and Inanna has returned from the underworld of the dead. This myth is a logical description of the flow and exchange of the seasons. For Demuzi and Inanna, there is love at first sight because that is all they have time for. They pass each other at the simultaneous moment in which Inanna is reborn and Demuzi is dying. Guess Inanna is the goddess of wine. The wine grapes are harvested that is, they die during late autumn. This story is about three deities taking turns dying and reliving as the cycle of the seasons repeatedly occurs. The deities represent the power in the seasons and in the storehouse. Dumuzi's seemingly random list of attributes accumulated through time as sheep herders and grain growers were merged under one social and political system and so combined their ideas of fertility and of springtime. Whenever we see a list of the major gods of a particular community, we are seeing a list of the aspects of nature and society most important to that community. The most important phenomena are those that provide life, for example, the rain and the sun, and those that provide the area's economic basis, such as herding, farming, or fishing. Myths describe specific aspects of nature and there was a sacred myth to explain each aspect of life and of society, each tool and procedure, and the origins of each of these things, including the origin of the group 